All right, take 37. Right, day 12 of preparations here. That's not true, it's day 5 billion. Uh, right, we're talking about principles of complex systems. Uh, this is season 15, and it's volume one because we have another version of Pux, which is called Complex Network still, but Pux goes for, for two semesters, really. Okay. Uh, throughout the semester, I'm going to be providing a few new videos like this. I'll be sort of mixing in with old clips um, and pot potentially lectures uh, from past versions of Pux. And um, I'm excited to be back. I know you are too. It's a complicated time. We'll talk about that as we go through. Um, and we're going to do our very best. Interestingly, it tries to switch to... Screen flow, I don't know why. All right, so there's a production crew here. Um, I'll just put them up for you. And very important character um, is our friend Pratchett the Cat. So it will just appear. He's an excellent mackerel tabby, and I highly recommend such uh, organisms adopted from the local shelter here. I think they gave him up, someone gave him up because he was um, very bad to other cats. But he's a lovely person to us. All right. Oh, and yeah, very important. You uh, need to, That's his Instagram account here. Um, he, he has a small but devoted following. Uh, this, is, this is him trying to eat some garlic, uh, which is not great for cats, but uh, hilarious for photographs. All right. <coughs> Spork is engaged. All right, so this is an overview. Uh, I'm going to just give you a smattering of, of um, a piece of information. We're going to talk about the website a little bit. Some developments, there's always developments in Pox. I'm always making new things. Um, first of all, I'm going to be hiding down in a small box here. So this is me, and I'll be looking up at the uh, slides from down, down this way. So I'll talk about how the slides are structured as we go along. But it's nice to be in a box. Happy to be in a box. All right, so tarot cards, we'll mention them occasionally. You don't have to worry about them too much, but they are just floating around. But this is the beginning, right? The sun. That's our first reading Okay, so this is an educational uh, platform that we've built um, under the, what we call the Vermont Complex System Center. Uh, we have a website for that, so you can go and explore that. But th these are really important words, and this is, this is our, our structure here, right? So describe and explain. To me, this is basic science. <coughs> I will come back to that. <coughs> I do apologize. Um, I'll come back to that, but describe and explain. And describe... Sometimes doesn't get the uh, merit it should, but uh, it's a, it's if you want to advance sciences, you have to measure things well. So we'll, you know, not just well, but but you know, incredibly well. So we will come back to what that is. Explain. Uh, we'll do plenty of that in this course. Uh, we want to understand why things become things, and then you get to do the fun things, right? Create and share. This is all fun too. But this is a, you, the stuff that people tend to go for straight away. Create, share, build. And we do have this ethos of play, and um, because that's you know how so much great science I think comes about, but also you know being good people. So so we're that that that's important to us. Okay, the complex system center. Uh, this is it's done well. We don't have data for its whole time in existence, but there was sort of a patch of five years where we recorded things. It's like you know four hundred papers. Um, 2015, that's before you know we developed some of the pieces I'll talk about now. Lots of support. Um, I haven't included Google here, but that's a new um, line of support. We have a fantastic program there looking at uh, open source organizations, Python and so on, like how do these things function well. Um, but the kind of the, the core kinds of funding, NSF, NIH, and so on, um, we've had some really, really nice support from these places over, over, over the years. And we have Mass Mutual now. Uh, that is a, um, a big grant there, $5 million over five years. Uh, so we're excited with, uh, with, with how things have developed. Uh, lots of press. Uh, we try to kind of tweet about and kind of keep track of that. Uh, it's not why we do this, of course, but if we get press, we get press. Can't control these things. We'll talk about that later on in the course, about you know, how, that, how that all works, because we eventually do get the stories. Uh, we've run a number of conferences over, over time, um, and 
more recently, we've done a better job of creating the sites and uh, archiving them. So these guys, um, that was surprising. Right, these guys, um, <laughs> Netsai and Alife, I know what happened. Um, huge. This was this was terrific, right? So this is uh, the the number the biggest uh, network science conference in the world. Uh, we ran it here in in Burlington. Uh, Ju um, Juniper Lovato was the the hero there, and Laurent Ebert Dufresne, um, sort of the main organizers. Really amazing. This was of course in person, uh, so you can you can go and check out that website. Uh, there were, there were some really cool things there that should work, but maybe it doesn't today. Um, let me see. Yeah, so a life for example works and uh, you can see we have some beautiful design If you've seen some of our uh, Logos, this is the same logo designer. It's a uh, Rob Baboni. He's an amazing artist old friend of mine and uh, So this was this was one done virtually and it, it worked out pretty well We're gonna continue to build cool things. All right, so back to this business uh, we have uh, an educational platform, which I'll talk about. You're part of it right now. And we have what we've been calling Canoe. That's somehow C-N-W-W. -W. Uh, it's a complex networks winter workshop in Quebec City. Magical place, magical time of the year. So it's December at the end of, uh, uh, end of the school year. So um, many of our students have been up there, but students coming from all around the world. So we're excited about how that's developing and we're getting great applications. I should say it's held in a monastery. Uh, it's, it's just a, it really, so I encourage you to go if you haven't been. We've had, uh, we've been able to hire people who are complex systems people by their training. Uh, the hiring process has worked in that way where it's been open, you know, not just in this department, in this um, area. Those are important hires, right? And we'll have to have them forever, of course. But, uh, you know, I do think going forward, there's, there's still, it's still important to keep developing this open open space of saying, okay, what's what are you know interesting, wonderful things that people are working on? Uh, lots of um, you know not, some nice accolades, NSF career awards are good things, and they kind of have blossomed within our group and uh, the P case as well, which is the sort of super special one that the president gets involved with. Uh, so that's uh, Josh Bongard got one of those, um, and he has a nice picture that he has of him standing next to Obama because he was. Of median height essentially all right so uh, we've have a few things we've done over the years to try and connect students um, we have scraps it's the uh, students complexity research and pizza seminar it's modeled after a, 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 um, a group that I built at um, MIT when I was a graduate student called um, spams the simple persons applied math seminar the most crucial two things in this um, no professors right because they're just terrible and um, food so yeah so pizza is sort of in the name there but you can you can eat different foods if you want but we understand our people we understand our people right and we want to make your lives better okay so uh, we have a paper shredder which you know comes and goes but it's it's a reading group um, where it's possible we might shred a, uh, a paper if we don't like it but that's just for humor you can find that on our website um, research jam, so that's another way of just getting it. There is, in fact, jam um, involved, but uh, the idea is to sort of jump in and, and, and try and sort of kickstart some, some research uh, and tea. So, you know, some of these things, of course, have been physical space uh, pieces, and we're adapting them to being online. Afternoon tea is, is the complexity. Talk Boctopus, uh, that is our new. Uh, version you know, we've had many kinds of uh, talk seminars over the years uh, this is a new one uh, we're running and so it's done by zoom uh, people from around the world we'll have our third one this afternoon dj patil who's the first person to ever have a a data science um uh title basically yeah right as data scientist right so uh and he worked with uh, in the obama administration as the uh what was he czar of data science anyway so good stuff all right, so that's uh, open. You have to you have to sign up, but it's an open thing. All right, so some of the, the actual humans involved, uh, we're developing this team and and um, in in kind of great ways, I think. So for so Hugh, for example, is over in, in medicine. That's this character here. I, I need to make sure I press the right 
the right buttons here because I know it's going to explode. Uh, yeah, he, he images people's brains and predicts what's going to happen, you know, which is complicated and slightly worrying. Um, but anyway, so we're, we're building this out. And we've got some great new young faculty coming in. Excited about these people. Uh, I'm just going to smash this in front of you. We're really interested in lots of, lots of things, for sure. Um, and uh, I'll try to give you the, the story that there, there, it is important to um, have a what I'll call post-disciplinary aspect to your thinking, that there are mechanisms, statistics, phenomena, um, and certainly tools and instruments that go across boundaries. And that's, that's happened more and more with the development of computational um, powers. But it's also you know, fundamentally because there are patterns that go across many systems. And so that's a, and, and there are mechanisms that give rise to them in these different systems. So that, that's something we'll really kind of highlight as we go through this, through this course. Obviously we can't study everything, but uh, you know, I wanna give you those, those, uh, those, those stories. And, uh, you know, if anything, just, just to develop into scientists who aren't provincial, you know, who aren't. It, it, it's really important to have specialists. We always need them, but we always need people to be um, aware and awake and, and open to uh, fields around them. And, and certainly many great developments have happened just because of that openness. Uh, we have this partnership, as I said, with um, uh, Microsoft. Um, Cognizant one didn't work out. Uh, see, te technology is one that's come and gone. Uh, this is what happens. But we have a we're 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 excited about where we're going with uh, with Mass Mutual. Um, the uh, logo we have for them, the mascot we have for them, is tardigrades, and I'll I'll throw them up at some point. Okay, so our teaching structure here we have built over many years, um, slowly, thoughtfully. Um, you know, structuring it out, it's, it's, it's scaffolded, I like to use that word here. And it, it started really with a certificate, which is five courses um, for graduate students, can be from across the, the uh, UVM. And um, that's going to go online soon. Then we built out to a master's, which is typically sort of 10 courses and, or maybe more, but also now you can do a thesis or a project. We've kind of reframed it a little bit, a thesis is, you know, I think many of us in many fields know this has become a bit of a dated uh, um, kind of concept. Uh, so, you know, we want papers. The, the, that's, the, that's the material that we want people to put out. And um, <coughs> as it says, you know, the, the old um, story there is caffeine in, papers out. So, and then we built a PhD. And, and so that started in 2018. Uh, we've already had a couple of uh, students graduate. I think we started with a cohort of 10, which was terrific. People, you know, we're not looking to um, poach people, but some students moved from their other disciplines in and in, into this PhD. Uh, that happened with the masters as well. And, and, you know, really, we're just trying to be responsive to the times and, and, and build um, educational platforms that will help students right that that's really what it is and it's not i mean sure indirectly helps our research programs and so on but it, that's it's not primary to that and and we're we're trying to teach the things that people need now it's not you know what i learned when i went to college many many years ago um i'll, I'll touch on that again but <coughs> yeah so um and they have their own little mascots of course because we have to do that so you can get t-shirts um, and things like that if you graduate from these programs. But we're, we're no, so we're, we're, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Um, the complex systems and data science, that framing is very important. I'll have a slide on that coming up. And uh, you can read about these programs if you're interested in one that you're not in necessarily right now, if maybe you're, you're not in any of these. And I will say that the masters, I have written here, but the masters has, um, look at that, excellent highlighting by me. The Masters has an uh, uh, accelerated Masters program associated with it, and, and some of you in this course will be part of that. Uh, it's been a big success. We're very excited uh, about how that's working. So it's sort of a four plus one structure. And you know, a good way to line that up is to do the data science undergrad. We don't run that. that that's an undergrad degree that is between computer science and math. Um, again, something that's evolving. But the core courses are 
from um, courses we've built over the years. All right, so these are the four, well, I'm listing maybe a little more, but the, the four core courses. So, so this course you're in, Parks, is, is one of the um, core courses. Actually, that's, I have to change that. It's going to be, um, we're, we're, we're at three now. Yeah, I think officially, yeah. Uh, so we have modeling complex systems. I shouldn't do that. Modeling complex systems, which um, Maggie Epstein built over many, many years, and um, Laurent Ebert Dufresne has, has taken over, that over and is building his own version there. Uh, Jim Bagro's Data Science One, which I think maybe is now official, um, is the third course. And then there's Data Science Two, so it's a, a natural sequence there. Uh, and then there's my second course, Complex Networks, which is always a little kind of influx. There's a lot of influx, there's a lot of stuff in about stories, for example, and language in there now. So we'll call it Complex Systems, uh, Principles of Complex Systems, Volumes One and Two. There are a number of other courses floating around here that are really um, important, like machine learning and um, deep learning, you know, really good foundational statistical courses, foundational mathematics courses, um, but also anything you know, associated with design or storytelling or visualization. You know, these are really important. So when, when I think of data science and the way we frame it here, it's not just any of the traditional disciplines, right? You need to have statistics and probability um, theory. You need that kind of thinking as well algorithmic thinking so that's and, and, and the skills that come out of computer science so just you know just raw coding for example but also thinking in terms of algorithms you know, much of the world is about algorithms um, some of physics and so you'll see that my course is imbued with um, work from physics and uh, stat mech is kind of the core there right so it's the micro to macro we'll come back to this like you know all these little things interacting giving rise to um, Emergent behavior. It's a big, big part of thinking about systems. Uh, but also design and uh, storytelling, right? So how do you, how do you, I mean, especially when we have these like enormously um, um, kind of rich complex systems, there's you know, a tremendous amount of data involved with, say, you know, large networks. Um, how do we compress that and try to um, <coughs> convey stories about them well? It's just really fundamental science, of course, I and mean, this is what science is. But um, you know, we, we've moved into an age where we can really confront ourselves with just an enormous amount of data, and uh, um, so we've got some work there uh, that, that contributes, and, and maybe that will come later in the, the course or the next one on, on what I would call, for example, allo taxonometry, which is the comparison of the structures of two different systems or a system at different times. You know, we're, we're having to measure really high dimensional systems and, and try to understand them. Okay. So here's, uh, here's this little framing for complex systems in data science. Th those words and the order of them matter greatly. So this is just online, but uh, just think about this for a second, right? So what is it? Stars and telescopes. If that was a field of study, what would it be? Um, if I, if I tell you that, that that's you know, some sort of abstraction of it, you know, we're using metonymy here, right? So there are many tools involved with all sorts of areas of studies and, and, and of course, things that people look at or, or think about in those. But, but, you know, broadly speaking, this is astronomy. Rocks and hammers. Okay, I'm going to have to deal with the, the notifications there. Um, <coughs> well, that is uh, interesting. So rocks and hammers, um, what's that going to be? All right, you can think about it. I'll, I'll give you, you know, a few seconds. Water and partial differential equations, right? Okay, it's more than just water, of course. Air, blood, milk, um, fluid dynamics. Uh, <laughs> this is our person here, crazily looking at people's, inside people's scones, right? So it's neuroscience. Uh, people and deception, um, right, that's the whole field of social psychology. I quite enjoy it. In fact, I don't think you can study anyone unless you have deception involved. Um, <coughs> at least that's the way they seem to behave. Of course, unfortunately, all of the famous studies have all fallen apart, and we'll come back to that. Um, mathematics and mathematics. That is, I guess, pure mathematics. It's pretty good work. 
mind of mine. Let's call it psychotherapy. Okay, so that's some amusement. But what are we doing here? Complex systems and data science, right? We're interested in systems and we will broadly say that we draw on the tools of what is now thought of as data science or what I what I think of as data science, which as I said, is this kind of very broad collection of, of tools. Um, you know, you, you, you don't want to be just a describer. You don't want to be just, and that, that may be a st statistics. You don't want to be just sort of a, uh, an emulator or a modeler, and that can happen in computer science. Um, you don't want to be just obnoxious, and that's physics, um, or think you know everything. You know, you need to be able to put all these pieces together, right? We need to be able to replicate the world, and you know, maybe that's a, some sort of crazy um, neural network thing. But we want to be able to explain it as well. And we want to be able to describe it in the first place. So we need all these pieces together. And um, yeah. All right. So that's that's what the, the, that, that frame is. They don't go out of order. You know, the scientific, the, the, the piece that we're interested in is complex systems. Like That's the big deal. And we're going to put that at the front. And then we'll put our toolkit uh, reference afterwards. Complex systems and data science. So we'll call that post-disciplinary system science. All right. Uh, we have a, a, a group within the Complex System Center. Uh, it's, I work with Chris Danforth. We've been um, um, at this for over 10 years now, and uh, we both came here in, in 2006 to UVM. We've had our nice um, funding sources. We would love to have more. Um, <coughs> so people have done all sorts of cool things. They've, they've gone off to uh, great jobs in uh, industry. Uh, some have gone off to academia. And um, we're, you know, we're, they're just a really fantastic group of people. And we're always um, thrilled to see them succeed and uh, move on and do all sorts of amazing things. So, uh, and we keep in contact with them and, um, you know, try to help them as much as we can. And, and you know, essentially they help us by, <laughs> by doing all the things they've done. All right. It's true. We do have a Strava, Strava um, story team thing. Okay, so you could read some more. This was a nice piece about um, Chris, myself, and, and our team, Computational Story Lab, and um, Pit and Outside Magazine of all, all places. But uh, it, it's fun, and so I'm just going to throw that up there. We together have a number of courses. Of course, I've mentioned um, principles of complex systems, complex networks. I uh, do teach... Um, uh, linear algebra when when I can. Um, it's not every every year, unfortunately, but because it's the you know, one of the great courses. So there's linear algebra here. Um, <coughs> we don't need to do that. Oh, we're getting used to the objects here. Uh, and then Chris has numerical analysis. Danforth has this chaos, which you know this is really an important part of understanding systems, right? So this really dynamical systems is is, is the the piece here. This is a chaos and fractals. These are mathematicians trying to lure people in to to um, do fun things. You know, it worked. Um, anyway, we're we're kind of moving on there. Uh, ODEs. You know, these are all just so there's some good sort of uh, you know basic stuff in here, right? Good good nutritional um, knowledge, and uh, that enables you to understand the world. Uh, and then some of these sort of larger things. So lots of papers have come out of um, particularly my courses in the sense that pr projects that people have been involved in have been connected to them. Um, it's more, much more than 45 now. I, I, and I've sort of lost track of, of how to count that. I think I need to kind of revisit that. It might be 60 or 70. So uh, that's not, that doesn't mean I have, you know, there are 10 papers a semester. It's usually sort of really kind of one or two eventually, but um, some of that work can lead to all sorts of other things as well. So um, it's something to aspire to, especially if you're a graduate student, um, but also an undergrad. Okay. Uh, this is uh, kind of a summary of my whole career. Um, so we start back up here. Uh, you know, I did have this one paper when I was a, uh, an undergrad working with um, uh, professors at, at the Australian National University. But I did all this stuff on networks early on. And it's river networks, it's branching networks, blood networks. I, I do talk about that in the complex networks course. Um, this, this stuff here is about trees, like how do they pack together ecology. Then we get into stuff about social networks and search. I'll come back to this later on in the course. 
this is influentials, which I know we talk about influences now, so I'll have something to say about this. This is where, you know, how things take off and uh, Music Lab. So this, that's become a pretty, pretty famous experiment about fame. Uh, and then uh, as you sort of go through it, you, you'll see this, this sort of a more of a transition through here. Of course, these are just little thumbnails. They're not supposed to tell you anything more, um, you know, deeply, I suppose. But there's a lot of stuff in here about happiness and stories, uh, looking at words. You know, a lot of work we've produced in the last uh, year, really, uh, has been about stories and um, tracking behaviors of all sorts of things online. Um, but I, you know, I do have a broad um, kind of portfolio. I mean, there's work on ecology. There's something that could, some work that could fit into economics. Um, there's word, uh, work that can fit into uh, um, uh, meteorology even, or, or climate um, uh, change. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, so, but my trajectory has moved more and more towards uh, um, stories, and, and we'll come back to that. Right, a little bit of information about the course here. Um, that's me. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I kind of have a whole bunch of settings and I have to change them um, as we go along. But I do have an office, um, but everything is um, in flux this semester. So I have a, um, uh, we're just going to be online for lectures, of course, as you will know. And we're going to sort out when we have uh, office hours. That's that's going to be uh, something to kind of get through in the first week. Uh, it's true that we have hashtags and so on, but that uh, that's that's not something people use so much anymore. Um, okay, so you also see here that we have um, right the the Twitter handle. So Poxvox, um, please follow that online. You don't have to follow it online because we do have. I mean, I should just say you don't have to, but I, you know, it's good if you can, um, because it's housed here. So if this is the website for the course, be adding to it. I'll come back and talk about it later on. But general instructions here, uh, the tweets will be just lined up here, right? And you can always just see them openly online. So you don't have to have um, a Twitter account, uh, which may or may not be a relief to you. And you're welcome to follow if you if if you want. So yeah, this is a little summary of where things are. It's not great um, right now. And we are right as of today about only two, two thirds of the way through 2020, which has proved to be a complicated time. So you should read this and this, and um, we'll, this is where I'll put all of the basic uh, instructions. Uh, stories, this is where there'll be weekly um, and in fact, hopefully, you know, this lecture you're watching here will be will be parceled out here um, into a kind of a story structure. So this is a, a new thing that I'm trying to build out properly. There's a huge sort of mass of uh, episodes here and clips. Um, so I'm going to keep housing them here. But this is, you know, and they are they are ordered and structured. Um, but there are a lot of them, and there's ways of sort of just you know passing through them and so on. There's like basically course admin, which maybe that's from a couple of um, years ago that that's not relevant uh, these are therap therapeutic things okay so you can you can jump on them too all right there's that and then the slides which are definitely something to jump to they have some simple structure so for example here's our overview um, there's a this is what we're going through now the slides with all the reveals for lectures you can see that in this the, here's a version here where they're broken down and, and you know it won't correspond to the slides that you see now, but if you go through these roughly, um, there'll be some stuff that's out of date. Printable handout, right? So this is, and these are, they are pretty big things, I agree. Um, that's a problem, but uh, not everything gets included in these slides. I sort of try to make them a little more um, under control. This one needs to be updated, uh, but that's, that's that works for some people. Um, and you're welcome to snaffle it. And then over here, this is the same as the slides that I would use in lectures, but they're just flattened so there aren't these incremental reveals. Assignments will live here. We don't have one yet, but um, they're coming. And just some information about slides. I'll add, I'll tune this up. We're going to use Blackboard for submission. Uh, and over here we have tarot cards. And this is sort of the course. So you can kind of go through that. The first 
uh, principles of complex systems ends kind of here in this area, right? Yeah, adjacent narratives. And then this is all uh, complex networks. So lots of fun things will happen. There'll be spherical cows. Um, we have uh, such an object here. Let's put that one away. Uh, we'll talk about contagion. When things get real, we want to be, um, we want to have our protective gear. So that's important. Okay. Yeah, so things are going well. All right, so back to this. We have, uh, there's a syllabus poster, you kind of these old school kinds of things that, that you need to have. Uh, so, but you can read them. They're, they're fun things. Uh, office hours, as I said, we'll, we'll try to sort them out. They will not be, um, they will not be there. Um, they'll be not physically in place. Okay. Right, we've talked about this. There are th these three versions of the uh, of, of all of the lectures. Um, you can see on the top of each, the front of each one, when it was last updated, approximately. So, um, hopefully, that will help if you want to re-download things. I've taken away these little navigation pieces that used to live down here somewhere, and you know, whatever whatever viewer you're using, you can you know, use your own thing. So in uh, Adobe, for example, it's, um, does it work? It can be a little funny, you know. Um, it's usually the um, square brackets and so on. So you can you can play around with that. So that depends on your, no, maybe not. That depends on your system. Okay. The slides do have references and um, so if you click on them, you can let me get my. Right. If you click on these, you can. I may, I may be lost if I go to this, but here they are. References are all here. I endeavor to put up links to PDFs. So if you download this, let's see if it works. Well, amazing. So integrated with with the the original um, uh, material as much as possible. This is a famous paper. More is different. Uh, we will mention that again, but. You should look into that one. So let's see if I can. Hmm. I think maybe they only work. No, I don't know. Amazing. So. Okay, so it seems like this may have changed. Yeah. Okay, so this has changed. All right. Okay, good. Yeah. Depends which one you're using. So this is, I'm using Adobe here, and if you're using Preview in Mac, for example, it's a different one. All right, so that's simpler. Good. Okay, boom, boom, boom. And you can go forward and all that sort of thing. So it should jump forward. Very nice. Good. Uh, right, so there are only links. If I will give you a link to Amazon if I have it, and I'm not saying you should buy, I don't get anything from that, just to be clear. Uh, but it's just it's kind of like using Google Scholar as a as a reference place to start from. Lots of weird things are involved in making these slides, and sometimes I feel like I should stop doing it. But ZLaTeX is what I use um, because of fonts. Um, just whatever general madness. This is Beamer, so if you're a LaTeX person, you, you might know about that, but it's, um, I have uh, rather strongly edited how it works. I do use Perl, and you can think of it as a command line utility, different to what Python gets to. Um, horribly, then there's PerlTech. So this is Perl wrapped around LaTeX, wrapped around Perl. So it's a horrible to of um of scripts okay and i like emacs but yeah i'm not going to tell you use that yeah all very evil little font uh shout out there so i'm um, trying to make it look good and very important thing by the way in beamer was is to make sure that the math if you're going to use something like helvetica make sure the math font is is clean i will i will uh, there are a lot of improvements here, and I want to get get this all up on on um, GitLab eventually. Working through producing books from these these um, courses, a lot of work. 
more things. Um, so as I said, system, it's uh, season 15. I'm going to call it volume one. I'm going to call the uh, lectures episodes. These are the kind of the in-person the in ones, the episodes. Um, they're broken clips as much as possible. And clips are going to be recorded at home um, in this little box that I live in now. Uh, and so um, I'll, I'll do my best to kind of add, add them. Uh, in useful ways. I, I, I don't want to, um, you know, make a mess of, of, of some of my older older recordings, but, you know, always getting better. So the lectures of bottle episodes, hilariousness for me, but I, I, I'm very interested in TV tropes, and um, if you want to work on that as a project, I would uh, be quite excited to get involved. So, um, yeah, so... The lectures are definitely bottle ones, right? No one gets off, uh, but this is something even worse. I think um, I need to figure out what the trope is for this. Um, but this is, you know, one person in a bottle. Okay. And you can always find last season's episodes. And I just want to say, just be a little careful with my... Uh, so here is with with navigation because here are all my courses, you know, and here are all the past ones. And it's true that I kind of got to a point where I thought, you know, I like the structure that I've built. So I've tended to the iterations in the format have become a little milder. So this is you know, a couple of years ago. You can see the this is when I think I started to add this instruction. It's a giant glowing red button at the front. So that they're going to look pretty similar, but. And, and if you just sort of wildly click around, you might end up in the wrong place. Or if you search on Google, you might end up in the right place. So also what I've tried to do is add uh, a little, maybe it's not big enough, and I need to, oh, that's the wrong one. Um, for example, let's go back to this one. It has a little warning at the top of each page. So it's possible I need to make that a little stronger. Anyway, so you want to be here. If you press on this one, You'll get to that. You you you'll get to our our version. 2020. All right. Good. Yep. Okay. Actually, a big part of getting pox and and um, what I called conks, but then coconuts, which is complex networks. Um, students really like conks, but I thought I'd move on to uh, a more fun Monty Python kind of word. Although Cox is definitely like that too. So um, <coughs> it's a real stretch to try and get the complex networks part there. Anyway, it's Pox 1 and Pox 2. Volume 1 and Volume 2, mixtapes. Uh, so yeah, I had a career grant from NSF and um, actually from the uh, social and economic sciences, which you know, was interestingly received by people in math, I suppose. But yeah, uh, some of those things have come true that we worked on and, and some of the happiness stuff that I've worked on uh, was, was definitely part of that, that, that proposal back then. But part of it was to support the, the development of teaching and, and you know, I'm very grateful for it. People have said nice things about Pox. You can look at that and um, it makes me feel somewhat happy. All right, so... Uh, we, we will be using Microsoft Teams for our main interaction. Uh, that's new for me this semester and presumably new for you too, new for everyone. So that, you know, there'll be some bumps to start with, but it's shaping up pretty well. Um, generally I would say do not use Microsoft products, but, um, Teams is pretty well done. So we do have Slack as well. Now we did have Slack for Pox. It was okay. Um, but we do have Slack now, a different one that's for students in complex systems and data science in general. So, you know, if you feel like maybe you're on the edge of it and you're not actually in a program, you, you know, you're welcome to join as well. Uh, so that's a more of a general discussion group place for everything. Lots of different channels in there. Um, students to support each other and uh, faculty are in there as well. So it's a, um, you know, we'll, we'll try to help people through the processes. It's very helpful for us to see where people are getting lost or finding things are working out well. But Teams is probably, get, is go, looks to be the place that will do, you know, the core of the course discussion. It's automatic um, and I believe, you know, so I think everyone's enrolled. Uh, Slack, you have to get invited and so I can do that. Um, yeah. 
than what we can. So this is complex systems data science grad. That's what it's. So you can you can jump onto that thing. Uh, you can put all these apps right. I'm in everything on your every magic rectangle you can find. Um, obviously not the cat and dog, but you know you can install things everywhere. And of course it's going to be fine. No one's. What what could go wrong? Yeah. But this is true, and I'll say it again. Um, yeah, behave well, uh, and uh, certainly in class and online. Just so if you're a good person, that's easy. If you're a bad person for whatever reason, just you know keep it in check. Um, obviously, this is a place that could be recorded very easily. So uh, that if if you have a tendency t towards lighting other people up, that which you know not good, um, then um, maybe that will something to think about for you but you know my experience with students over the years is uh, at UVM very good people occasionally very occasionally we have some problematic people but you know it's once every five years ten years so um, but we're in a different environment and I just you know and, and, and I just want people to be um, respectful and empathetic especially given the context of everything and um, you know, be polite and, uh, and and try to help each other I do want you to work in groups at some point in this in this course when it comes to projects, and so, you know, just be good people. You you'll get more out of life. Yeah. Right. So we have, um, you know, and I could move assignments to the top of this this piece here. I think um, I kind of have in the syllabus, yeah, you know, projects and assignments. Um, right. So. We're going to have uh, semester-long projects, but it will take a couple of weeks before you kind of coalesce around a small team and also uh, um, you know, something to work on. I have lots of possible projects, and I've, um, I, will, I will work towards retooling how I present that. Um, but certainly things I've proposed you know, over the years have been worked on, and we've published papers, and blah, blah, blah. If you're a, an undergrad, then you might want to, and you could be a grad as well, but an undergrad, you might want to do something where you look at a body of work that exists, right? That's well done. Maybe it's controversial. Maybe it's, it's important. It's interesting. Whatever, there, you know, there's some aspects about it that, that draw you towards it. It's an area you want to go into uh, and, and work on that. You know, take it apart. I, I think, you know, we, we live in an age of such, you know, data and the ability to get it and, and play with it. You know, it's really... Um, good to be to be working with data so um, you know I would as much as possible make that a, a focus but if you're a theoretical person fine okay so that but so that's undergrads and at the grad level then you know you could be working on a project that is part of your thesis work uh, it could be and certainly we want we're happy to have projects that kind of go through the courses you know so it could be something that was in data science one and da 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 uh, and I think now with the new Slack um, structure, I think that will be um, for for the complex systems and data science students. I think it will be a helpful place for everyone to kind of get together and and, and talk more. So I'm, I'm excited about how that that, that should develop. So assignments. I'm going to make it 75 percent this semester. Uh, there will be 10 probably, and um, sometimes people get upset about that but we're going to make there's going to be 10 um so it's short of every week right we sort of have 13 and a half weeks in the semester somehow we have 12 and a half and then we have um thanksgiving which is truncated we'll come back to that when it comes you know disease spreading we'll talk about the movement of people around for, for these events it's gonna be a, a big part of it uh but then just really a week after that so uh yeah, there'll be an effort then definitely to have all the assignments done by, by Thanksgiving. I've got a 1% here, just so that it's not zero, but um, you know, if you're on the edge of some grade or something or you know, behavior and, and your participation, which you know, now I'm not sure, we'll, we'll see how we measure things um, or aware of things, you know, can be aware of things uh, because, of, because everything is online. But yeah, some encouragement there. Grading works in this way. I've used this my whole career. Basically, 
and uh, after coming across it, it's it's great. Um, it's going to be easy for for our grader, for you, for me, to understand. Uh, so, yeah, basically, if you've got it right, you know, something was a slightly off. That's fine. Uh, you know, the the whole thing wasn't going to explode if, if if that's how you presented it. Uh, you get a three, so it's out of three. Um, zero. You know, if you leave the thing blank, if you just it's a total disaster, then that's that's where it is. So it's kind of like an F. Um, so sort of A, B, C, F, right? Think of it like that. So these are broad categories, and they will they help the grader and they help the gradee. Uh, you know these things. I just try to have them set up in my slides so that they're so I, you know I, I I make sure I know what I'm doing and and um, um, have everything integrated. So uh, access, if you have um, any. Um, uh, issues, then you can um, write to me. Uh, athletic stuff, I think, will be more comp. You know, extent to which that is going to be part of UVM's semester, I don't know. But of course, right? Um, please, please let me know. I guess you can use Teams. You know, I'm getting more familiar with Teams, but um, for private messages, maybe that's the best way to do it. Email, yes. Email is not brilliant uh, because. It's just a big melange of madness, but uh, so it may be good to try to send me DMs there. I won't put teams up on the screen here, I don't think. Maybe I will, but we'll see. Yeah, I'll do my, I, I would never uh, attempt to share anything private, of course. Uh, but yeah, okay, so there's that. Uh, the Twitter account is a yeah. So that so there'll be some broad updates there, uh, which feed into the website, and of course, probably more and more, um, I will sort of just uh, declare those things in Teams as well, and maybe I can integrate the tweets. Oh, right. Okay, good. So. I'll tell you a few things here, just about some popular science books. Um, I think uh, we're, in, you know, we're, we're we need the next raft to come through. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying. Uh, so this is an artifact, complexity. This is uh, um, a book by Waldrop that appeared in '93, and it came after. It says a lot. You know, none of you were born. It came some. It it it, it came after James uh, Glick, Glick, Glick's. Um, book uh, Chaos Theory, or Chaos, as it was called, on Chaos Theory, which was um, just an enormous bestseller. And it was a wonderful book. And, uh, and you know, it was just a really inspirational book for, for many, I think many people of my uh, era, you know, was you would read this, and, oh, you know, it's so exciting. Uh, personally, what turned out with the timing was that, of course, that book was written when the science was well developed. I mean, it was still very new, but it was well developed. Uh, this was a sort of a set of books that came after that were trying to get at these new sciences that weren't really there yet. And so this is early 90s, um, which was near yeah, the 90s. Wow, what a time. Um, but it's sort of pre-big data. Pre, and of course, we call big data big data because it's about us. Uh, this is not really pre-big, big data because physicists were running around with way too much data. But, you know, computers were still getting going. The web... Um, as we called it then, the World Wide Web is 92. Internet's been around si since 69. But um, you know, this is just that transition for this global connection to take off. You know, and eventually get us Snapchat and TikTok. So, <coughs> which I think are great. S so, th but it was inspirational as well. And uh, it was actually handed to me uh, by a, a great friend of mine, um, we went to college together, which in Australia is like the English thing where you live in a college and you go to the university. So I went to Trinity College at Melbourne University. That's the residential place, and it's all very uh, funny. You wear a uh, you know, black tie and all that sort of thing, and you wear uh, academic gowns to dinner, and it's in Lat Latin grace, and, and it's hot because it's Australia, and nothing makes any sense. So, um, But that's okay. So, uh, yeah, Andrew Marikoff, or... Mara Bascoli, he is um, a brain surgeon. So, um, he, you know, he's, he's yeah, 
plays video games with people's brains, basically. Uh, but yeah, so he was the one. He said, yeah, he actually, I remember this very well. He said, oh, don't worry about chaos anymore. Like, read this. And, uh, and it was terrific. You know, it basically, it, it absolutely changed my career in life because I, I thought, oh, I'm going to go to the, I, I was going to come to the U.S. Um, I am from somewhere else. And, um, but I, this is what I want to work on. More about that later, perhaps. These are more, uh, these are some other popular books. Uh, and so Neil Johnson is an old friend of ours who I think it was called Three is Complexity, maybe in England. He's English. Uh, and uh, now is it, um, where is he? At uh, George Washington University. But um, yeah, this is the name here, uh, Simple Complexity. So, so that, Melanie Mitchell, who's done wonderful work for many, many years uh, in, in the educational realm of um, complex systems, complexity. She's uh, associated with the Santa Fe Institute, and they keep doing good things. And we have lovely connections with them, and uh, a deeply inspirational place. So, and then I have the, a, a Gleick book here as well. So this is many years, of course, after his um, Chaos book. Uh, the Information, which is a wonderful book, it just roars along. Um, one of my favorite things in that is the, uh, the alphabet, the alphabet which he describes as being contagious, right? It was sort of invented this one time um, and, and just went <coughs> exploded. Um, it's not entirely true. But there's, so, so, all right, some other pieces, beautiful book, book on scaling, um, which may be of interest to some of you, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about scaling. That's sort of the first big thing that we develop here in the course. And um, yeah, just just some fantastic things in this book. It's, uh, it, this is a great way of, of, of a great sort of, um, well, I mean, it's a truth of the universe, but it's a, the, the thinking that can be associated with it is really amazing. It's sort of back of the envelope calculations. Um, <laughs> I guess I have this, yeah. So Jeff West book, Scale, no. Um, I'll talk more about that in uh, volume two. So creation of the universe. Uh, this is uh, a little thing um, just to sort of throw in there because Pax, we're actually really interested in the whole thing, right? Why complexify? And obviously we start off from some big soup. I say obviously, but at this point we kind of understand that. Uh, and so we'll come back to that later on, but gravity is a big deal, right? Why aren't we a big soup? Well, gravity, and why isn't everything falling apart? Gravity. So um, that puts us all in these little balls, and um, when I say us, I mean little tiny bits of things, and eventually life comes out of that. So still, lots to, lots, uh, there's a lot for us to understand uh, about uh, why anything exists, of course. So. Um, and we have some some big ideas about that that are quite um, incommensurate. So we'll see. But we've made a lot of advances, and that's part of what we'll talk about in Pox as well. Is that you know we've come a long way in the last, especially the last hundred years. But only really the last hundred years uh, has have there been really profound um, like solidification. Uh, so there's a reference to Freeman Dyson's uh, article, uh, a piece on this. Um, anyway. We're going to talk about George um, Kingsley Zipf, interesting character, uh, who died a year after this book appeared. So he's only about 50, and I'm not sure what happened to him. I don't know too many details about his life. But um, yeah, very interesting. And this is a reprint. You can buy it uh, much more cheaply. Schelling, uh, we'll talk about some of Schelling's uh, thinking, one of the great economists. Um, well, all right, I won't say anything, but... Yeah, Nobel Prize, and um, uh, just a very clear thinker at the time. Come back to him. So Philip Ball's written wonderful things for, for many, many years. So he's a, um, a scientific writer and, um, and just has book after book after book. Incredibly, you know, just an amazing um, producer. And so this, this is a bit older now, but it's, it's, it connects into this um, idea of statistical mechanics and you know, little things creating big things. If you look at, say, um, you know, Asimov's foundation series, right? That's, that's, the, that's the idea that Asimov put into that, which was statistical mechanics, basically, right? That lots of little interacting things can give rise predictably to, to global behavior. 
it's not really psycho history isn't really the way it works but it's good it's good stuff um just some other pieces here uh yeah evolution right so evolution is the advent of games really right so you have raw physics forming the the balls that we live on and chemistry and all this sort of stuff takes off um, but eventually we get life and then life becomes algorithms and games and then we get a ratchet up through the layers of complexity again giving us TikTok. okay so um but you know remarkable things including penguins and the cat pratchett who's really a, quite a specimen hopefully he will be involved at points but you know Uh, just a couple of pieces here about stories because to me stories is the big the big point here um and uh right so algorithms and stories i like to sort of float around thinking about how they're they're really in the same game and we'll come back to that later i have a big section on stories okay so different pieces there's the evolution of stories themselves then there's the evolution of people and how stories affect them and you know uh, some more in those kind of realm of textbooks and some of these are a bit older um, and, and vary in the way they're done uh, the critical phenomena one by Sornet is a little bit of everything um, Miller and Page um, there's something wrong with the little my little automatic includer thing I'll fix that up uh, that's the coming from social scientists so good stuff Scott Page has written some uh, has a recent book uh, which I should get hold of a few I have it on modeling and so on so I should suggest that uh, and then an older one here on on, uh, on modeling complex systems you see the sort of networks are not really a big part of it and, and of course that's a piece we'll get to later centers I mentioned um, Santa Fe Institute sort of being the core to all of this there are some really strong ones that have developed over time that are in uh, universities. So there's Northeastern has the Networks Institute. We have a nice connection with them. Students have kind of gone back and forth, uh, as well as you know the, the faculty. Um, <coughs> are we just supplying them? Maybe we are. Okay, it's a big scam. Nico has been terrific. This is uh, at Northwestern. Some really fantastic people there. Um, MIT has a department, now, an institute now for data systems and society, which is just like, these are all the words, right? Pretty great. Nexi's been around for a long time. That's Yanni Abayam. Um, you know, has, has, has had staying power. Michigan, which has uh, Mark Newman, um, has a complex systems center. It's sort of spread out. Data science groups are a bit of a mixture because it became this term that uh, corporations seem to be very excited about. Um, everyone said, oh, yes, we do data science. Yes, 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 I am a professor of data science. I just didn't mention it before. So that's, um, you know, that's something you've got to be careful with. So I, I, I just want, I want to say we, you know, we've organically built things over a long, long time, and it's very real here. So that's us with our Roboctopus. All right, a couple of other pieces you know there are many things of course online following individuals on twitter and and um uh, wherever but complexity digest been around for a long time um nautilus magazine you know i hope they keep going they've they've published lots of interesting beautiful things um but so there are there are these places to to go and um immerse yourself in in uh beautiful things thinking beautiful thinking about uh complexity Okay. Pox is um, a little bit in between, right? Uh, coursework ones where it's like, oh, here, here's how to do something. Now do it 100 times. Very important. Really important. Wax on, wax off. Wax off super important. Um, but, you know, at some point you have to get into research and that could be a bit tricky. I mean, because you've done so much course, if you're kind of in that uh, mold of things, you need to you need to get out there and spin the brain and, and you know suffer a little bit actually uh, in a different way. Um, obviously, school is full of suffering, which is fine, 
Um, that's how you get your brain to get to, to new places. But this, this is a bit of a different feeling. It can be very uncomfortable. Like, you know, maybe there's no solution. Maybe this is just a terrible thing to work on. All these sorts of problems suddenly arise. So it's going to be a bit like that. So some of the projects will probably, you know, explode into flames. Education. Yeah. It's a little scary. So the major themes, uh, we have a manifesto because I felt the need to, I, you know, I just had to build that at some point. This is what complexity is, what we think about when we, what we mean when we talk about complex systems and what we mean when we talk about thinking about complex systems and what a science of complex systems could do. Um, there isn't a universal one, but there are, all right, we'll come to that. Um, but there are certainly um, phenomena that, that go across lots of systems and the tools and the ways of thinking about them, they're very general as well. So there's some, some pieces here. Manifesto, which the tarot card for that one has a shovel, which is basically just get on with it, grab a shovel and get on with it. Um, but this is, mo this is basically modern science now, right? So, you know, we have this pandemic and Pox has got a lot to say about this pandemic. It has forever had a lot to say about it. And, um, you know, I am truly distraught about what's happened. I mean, not many people are, of course, not everyone, but, you know, I'm distraught for many normal reasons, but also just like we know, we know how these things do and don't work and are, are deeply uncertain. We'll come to it. But it's where we need to be. A lot, so much of what's, what we worry about in the world is post-disciplinary, right? It's, 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 uh, there are systems that involve people, that involve geo aspects, that, you know, whatever it is, maybe um, power grids, you know, power grids, for example. People, the way they use things, da 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 right? Uh, you know, and, and so it could be a squirrel that, you know, chomped on a wire, but it could be people using things in certain ways that make a mess of, uh, you know, and lead to a blackout. Um, what about traffic, the way people move around, the way organizations work? Um, you know, and climate change. Climate change is not just, you know, it's obviously involves people, but it involves people not just in what we use and do, but it the stories we tell about climate change, you know, whether we believe it or not. Um, when it comes to pandemics, again, you know, people, of course, are the, we're, we're the ones that are spreading it, right? We're the, we're the soldiers of this virus. The virus is like, thanks. It doesn't say that because it's just a virus, but um, if it did, and we love to anthropomorphize, it would say thanks. So, um, yeah, we just need people who, we need experts and we need people who can think a little bit outside of their boxes so they can connect with other people who are experts, but we need lots of people who, a good number of people who really can go across these fields. Uh, we'll talk about data, measurement, um, but the, so the, the three corners of everything has always been data, which you know, involves measurement, uh, theory, you know, here's my model of what's happening in the real world, and experiments, right? So there's like some natural observation, I'm going to make a little experiment over here, and I have theory, and you want all those things to connect, and, and the really successful fields have done that, and we'll, I'll give you examples as we go through the course. Emergence, absolutely gigantic part of this, right? So, and, and th I'll catch this in various ways, but um, one that I've used over many years is, right, there's no hurricane, for example, inside a water droplet. There just isn't. Um, there's no financial collapse in a dollar bill. Um, no love in a carbon atom. That's another one. So somehow, you know, we put all these pieces together and, and of course, evolution does that for us, but um, you know, physics put the earth together. Uh, chemistry put early life together and and eventually you get this emergent behavior the behavior of which doesn't you know is not uh, present in the individual pieces so that's you know a profound thing um, actually originally came out of philosophy we'll come back to it and then there's this tension between universality and accidents of history right so the platypus is the platypus pretty weird thing um but say you know it has if we look at say fish, you know, swimming in a, in um, in a in a fluid, you know, you're not going to have fish that are shaped like. Uh, I mean, there are some pretty weird shaped fish. It's true, but uh, and and the ones that are 
you know, they're not going to be things that cannot move in the water fast if they're trying to be fish, right? That's just not a not a good plan. So they tend to be what we think of as fish shaped. Um, we have rays. That's a two D thing, sure. Um, but they, there's some, there's, you know, they're going to respond to fluids, and fluids have a universal story for them. Navier-Stokes equations, right? So if you had fluids on another planet, the things that swim around in it would would be kind of in the same game plan. Same with plants, phyllotaxis, the way things grow, there are sort of limits to the kinds of shapes that get produced. Um, <coughs> but yeah, there's, there's, there's of course then uh, accidents of history, and, and we can end up with some, we get locked into things. Right? We've built out a DNA. We're not gonna evolve a new story for the, at that level. So, um, you know, yeah. Anyway, so we'll get to some of that. Uh, but yeah, so micro, so we, we want to understand um, how things become things, the basic science. And, you know, a really profound part of that is this micro to macro mechanism story. Not everything works in that way. It's not just like everything just, you know, combining in a nice way. Some, some have feedbacks from the outer loops and so on and so on. But this is a, this is a really sort of just, We've got to get this right. Uh, there's going to be scaling. There's a big part to start with. It's just a really, really profound part of thinking about systems. What I'll call surprise, statistics of surprise, which again is a scaling uh, piece, which is kind of think, you know, various examples, but earthquakes perhaps, right? So lots of tiny little tremors now and then. There's a bigger one. Um, every year there'll be, you know, one of a certain size, pretty variable every 10 years, every 100 years, every 1,000 years. So it's a logarithmic story, and we'll, we'll kind of harden that up. Uh, floods are another example like that. Um, things change in, in, uh, over time in a problematic ways. Such we say, you know, the 100-year flood comes every year, but that's a way of encoding this, um, you know, this unexpectedness. But statistics of surprise. Uh, and eventually we'll show that pandemics are kind of the worst, actually, the most deeply unpredictable, at least to my knowledge, uh, of what I'll call natural disasters. Networks, enormous part of thinking about complex systems. Many systems have a network structure, not all of them, but um, at all, but um, that's a big part. Robustness is a big piece, like why do things stay together and not fall apart? And that's been a, that's been a challenge to understand that theoretically. You know, ecosystems, you know, we worry about them falling apart all the time, but of course, they are there, you know, so there's a lot of day-to-day -day stability in systems, a lot of day-to-day -day stability in societies, um, but they can fall apart rapidly and explosively, and, and you know, we'll, we'll touch on ways in which that can be seen as happening through models, of course, with real-world examples. Um, but let me, let me just add a piece here about the, the structure and stories part, is we will come to this, I think, hopefully repeatedly, where the mechanisms and stories we come up with, often they can be toy models. What we'll talk about is toy models, which are really simple, really simple models. Right, just, we can have, we'll, we'll talk about the icing model, for example, for magnets. Um, there's models for you know, how people copy each other and so on. They're really simple, right? They're, you know, there's, no one in, there's no complex kind of humans involved. They do one thing, they copy or they don't copy whether, you know, one tiny little aspect of behavior. And we put them in some network. So what those kinds of models can tell us is how collectives behave and, you know, the sort of possible but modes of behavior. And that is incredibly important because we are, and this is a deep thing, I think, we are very good at seeing how individuals might behave because we're individuals, we can kind of track them and we try to reduce systems to individuals all the time. Um, so it's a great failing. We, we're not good, and, and the linear algebra thing here is left null space contains the stories of collectives. We're just not good at seeing them. We're not good at seeing them. We're not good with probability as well. It's another thing we'll talk about, but we're also just not good at, not, it's just not a natural thing for us. We like to impose a story of an individual on top. So <laughs> simple models do that for us. Complex models where we put everything in the kitchen soup. We're trying to absolutely replicate, you know, the, tra the traffic of this place or the, um, you know, how people are 
spending their money, you know, like really, really, really detailed kind of model of it or really detailed model of the, the fault system in, in California or the, you know, the climate. That's where we're trying to put everything in. We're trying to make our little computer version of it and run it forward. So it's kind of hard to be in between those places in a useful way. And, uh, and I will return to that. But so I just want to sort of say this, that, that um, simple models have this real place in the world. And um, because of the stories they tell us. But there's a limit. There's a limit to them. Okay theory of anything. We're not going to do it. But um, why complexify? You know, why, why is there this ratchet of complexity? I mean, I think I've touched on a few of the pieces that are there and why we should kind of expect to see it, you know, this ratchet take place in, in um, over and over. We ran the universe again. Of course, there's, we haven't, we're not aware of life somewhere else, but um, but we also know that things can get capped at different different points, right? That, that life won't, won't work out. All right. It's all about stories. I will add this, the complex systems are a big story, big story. And so there's a blob, which is sort of the, the, the complex, complex system we have here, right? So this is the all, all the complex systems you can imagine. And there are complex systems with network, network structure. And they're a part of it. And the field, the field of complex networks, which I, you know, is sort of part of the original you know, and that um, has, has developed, developed almost enormously, enormously. And, and, and uh, I do worry, worry a little, little bit that come, come through, through with that with training, that training. It's, it's fine, it's good training, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, that, that, you know, networks, networks are everything, and that, and that, there, there is a lot, it's a lot, it's a, it's a great, amount, great amount of systems where, 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 network, network, in structure, structure, but not every, not every, so, 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 yeah, yeah, you can have a fluid to a large, 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 that's a big system, it's, 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 a rhyming sign thing, 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 thing um, um, which comes out of Cockney England, so if you haven't seen that before, I just want to mention. So, so yeah, um, what's the John Dory? That is a way of saying hello. And uh, I kind of, what's the John Dory with this thing? You know, explain it. Hematolea, uh, I'm sure I can't say that properly, but it's uh, where you have a rhyming sign thing, which is ideally meaningless, right? Like the connection is meaningless. It's a it's a cryptolect, right? We're trying to kind of encrypt our language and it's often used by people to maybe obscure themselves from from people with, with higher power around them. Um, Beers, Edward Lears, Edwards. Why not? You you take off the bit that rhymes because you know, we're monsters, right? So um, okay, Boris Spassky's that's a bit of a throwback, but yeah, play chess, and that could be taxis, and then it's Boris's. It's a very strange business because, you know, you describe this and you say, all right, this is a whole way of speaking, and da da da, and, um, and then, but you can't just come up with them, right? So it's like, oh, I'm going to make up some rhyming slang. I don't really, I, I'm sure this has been studied, but um, there's a real feel to it that you can't just, if you make something up, there's, there's just a whole feel to it. And you can certainly say, no, that's that's just not right. I mean it rhymes, but it's just not right. You can't use it. So I, I don't I don't it's a very odd odd bit of thinking. Okay, so quickly I want to talk about some topics. Um, scaling phenomena, that's gonna be our first big area. Uh, allometry is the scaling of um, it, it it indicates scaling uh, that is not isometric in that um, there is some power related between uh, uh, some exponent. We'll get to these words. I know, kind of getting ahead. Um, that's non-trivial. Right? It's not what you would expect. The the sh shapes or maybe a time frame or something. There's some aspects of systems that, as you look at bigger and bigger versions of some part of the system, then some other part of it scales in a non-trivial way. We'll get to that. Some very interesting scaling with social phenomena as a function of city size. 
Um, <coughs> biology is full of scaling, right? I mean, massive range of sizes. And you've got all these things running on these tiny little cells, right? The cells in elephants. They're similar kind of little Lego blocks that you have in mice. So what's going on with that? Um, okay, so that's going to be a big piece. We're going to get to what's called Zipf's law. I mentioned Zipf before. Power law size distributions. That's a big part of it. So the scaling, which is you know, how things grow together. Power law size distributions are if we sample from a distribution, what's the probability of some size? <laughs> that's more of the earthquakes or financial collapse kind of realm. That's the next area. I'll show you how that's connected to the Zipf's law. The 80-20 rule will come much later on and it's connected to the 1%. Um, and uh, yeah, so this will lead into what, so we'll, we'll see that these scalings appear everywhere, all sorts of places, all sorts of different, you know, biology, in engineered systems, uh, in technological systems. And then try to get at some fundamental mechanisms that lead to them. Okay, so lead to these, these distributions. And a really important one is going to be this one at the bottom here, um, the rich get richer mechanism. So this, this is something that, um, yeah, I don't know if that helps, but this is something that's going to, you know, we're really going to dig into it. It's, a, it, it's an enormous feature in it. You, ultimately, you'll see this is behind why people do all sorts of things, education, um, you know, cheating to get into better places, um, pay all off of music, um, trying to get in front in some way, because this mecha this ratchet mechanism is is out there. But it's also in biology, it's also in the sciences, it's also, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really enormously prevalent, um, non kind of system specific mechanism. Robustness, this is very important, um, gigantic thing, right? So why do things generally not explode? And if they do, why is it so enormous? Um, forest fires, of course, is a huge issue again in California. It's a massive issue where I grew up in Australia. How do we contend with um, you know, what, is, what is a natural phenomenon? Um, and how, how do we build things so that, or, or, you know, do we do anything, blah, 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 all these, all these problems, right? Um, so how do we, how do we cope with risk? And it's about risk. This will then connect quite beautifully, I think, to optimizing how you locate facilities. This is sort of a flip version of this. How, where do you put your Starbucks? Where do you put your schools so that some social good is optimized? And that could be, you know, a true social good where it's like, it's not too far to schools on average um, for kids or it could be a different kind of social good where the, the uh, you know, the coffee shop makes as much money as possible by allocating all of their, right? So you wouldn't just lay down a start. You wouldn't look at a grid of the US and put a Starbucks every, you know, 100 miles in a grid. You just wouldn't do it. So obviously you're not going to do that. We're going to put it where people live. But then it turns out we're going to do that in a very structured way naturally and, you know, potentially purposely, but we'll do it naturally depending on what we're trying to do. Make money or... Um, make people's lives better. Uh, fundamentals of complexity, that's a piece that we'll come back to in the middle of the course and then later at the end. Um, I mentioned gravity, big deal here. And talked about some of these pieces. Measurement, just the just the just how fundamental measurement is. You know, measuring time. That wasn't easy. Um, measuring temperature, not easy. So if we start to think about measuring, you know, economic performance and which we seem to be quite happy with run, running around saying, oh the Dow is this. Um, you know, that's a pretty messy business, um, given how much we've been able to nail down uh, what we have in, in physical systems. You know, we really, really, really know how to measure stuff there. And again, emergence, right? So we'll come back to that. Complex networks it has this uh, origin in statistical mechanics, which has this origin in physics. And I'll talk about how that really has an origin in thinking about people. So that's a nice bit of... Um, uh, nice work for humans there. So complex networks is a huge piece, as I've mentioned, and I'll give you some history there. I think it's important because um, I'm that old. And um, yeah, lots of lots of fun pieces. That will lead into, broadly, socio-technical systems, which will be uh, 
disease spreading. So we'll talk about pandemics uh, and we'll talk about how they're deeply uncertain. Uh, we'll talk about problems with the way they're being measured. And I will come back to this in this course throughout because you know I, I think as much as anything that's gone wrong, the measurement and the dashboards and all these pieces have been really, really a problem. But of course, you know, fundamentally, it's a leadership issue. Um, Schelling's model of segregation. Um, it's a powerful story that's going to lead into, a, you know, a, a deeply sobering one. Uh, we'll show how that's connected to these basic imitation kinds of models, which again, tell, pow tell powerful stories with sort of very minimal mechanic. Um, so the thing is, you can you can understand the system. It's like, oh, you know, this is, these are the only two things that can happen. You're like, okay, all right, fine. And then you let it run. You're like, oh, that's really surprising. You know, so that's, it's a bit of a game, really, in trying to get those little models to tell us something interesting about the world. So collective behavior, this global cooperation part, you know, all these things. Uh, and that will lead into ultimately stories, contagious stories. Um, you know, how do people vote? Um, how, do, how does fame take off, right? So this will come back to the rich gets richer model. We'll just, we'll just see that, that that model itself or that mechanism is just appears over and over and over. It's a very very easy to construct and a sort of very easily accessed kind of mechanism. So, and a big piece in here will be fame, right? Unpredictable fame. And just for free, we'll tell you how to make things spread, right? How to become famous. Easy. But basically, we'll tell you how. And, and unfortunately, you know, this is really, this is deeply understood by some people. Um, and it's why, you know, certain services like Facebook have been, become really dangerous in the way they, they, they function. Um, so Pox has been, you know, we've been criticizing Facebook since, you know, we started 2007. And, uh, you know, so we'll get to that. But it's about, you know, networks and spreading. Yeah, so fate doesn't exist. So that's kind of a nice thing to have um, come to. Um, you may not believe that's true, but I, I, you know, I'm going to show you experiments and, and results that uh, kind of push that into the truth column. So, uh, yeah, we'll talk about some of these other pieces potentially, right? Happiness and, and cities. We'll touch on them for sure. Um, yeah, especially in scaling uh, the cities part. But uh, yeah, possible. Okay, so there's going to be an arc to the course. Manifesto. There's going to be a thread of social phenomena throughout because it just, it just matters. It just matters. As much as you might want to think, you know, getting oil out of the ground or earthquakes or whatever is, you know, independent of people. Um, yeah, there's always going to be some, some aspect of, of, of people that matter, you know, and it's, and it's the stories they tell. Uh, but a big part to start with will be just this, what we'll call scaling or just uh, more, just, just simply scaling, but allometric scaling, many different systems. Um, size distributions of system elements, right? So these are these power law size distributions or heavy tail distributions. Then we said, well, why are they there, right? So we, we have the central limit theorem for normal distributions. We'll talk about that. It's a beautiful thing. And we'll talk about that in the context of random walks. Then we'll get to this, um, this uh, so some nice pieces here of trying to understand why we see these patterns, um, these really broad patterns across these systems. And, um, and we'll have some arguments there about whether it's just sort of a kind of a simple minded mechanism, like a, just a kind of a growing thing, or ratchets along, or there's an optimization process, right? Which might suggest there's a kind of an evolutionary feature. So we'll see there's a famous debate there, which is kind of fun between uh, Herbert Simon and, and Mandelbrot. And um, yeah, got a little, little heated as it could in the day, which is by um, papers, not tweets. Robustness, so that will sort of naturally go into robustness. There's a lot that, we can, that connects there, like as to why systems are generally okay, but can explode. Uh, then we move into networks, and that's a, you know, all sorts of things there, growth mechanisms, um, just some very, powerful storytelling again from simple models like you know here's our simple model and and look boom you know we have um 
you know, this idea of small world searchability, for example. And then, uh, as I said, biological contagion, social contagion, um, voting, which is all connected to that, and then eventually stories. And the last part will be just some musings, if you like, um, theory of anything, the rise of algorithms too, right? The, how we go from raw physics through to algorithmic phenomena. All right, good. There are tarot cards. I mentioned them before. There are just a lot of them. And um, they will make some sense, perhaps, but uh, they are just part of the course. And they have little Easter eggs in them. Lots of Easter eggs in this course. Projects. Okay, so plan for projects is we're going to have um, these semester-long projects. We're going to have teams within teams, it's, you know, Microsoft Teams. But we'll, we'll figure that out. It's going to be probably a little bumpy as to how we interact well, um, but we'll get there. And uh, as I said, we're going to try to get a proposal in the first few weeks. And yes, I've talked about this, right? So we, we could be anywhere from truly novel, groundbreaking research or just novel research. It's going to be groundbreaking um, you know, you're doing something for the first time or down, you know, to looking at this either well-established or, or novel research that's just come out um, and trying to uh, figure out what's going on. Because for sure, if you look at uh, recent science and, and also old science, I mean, there are many examples now, many, many examples of, you know, students basically going through something that's thought to be, you know, this great, wonderful result and finding someone made a mistake in an Excel sheet. Yeah. Um, couple, th again, well, this is sort of negotiable, but the idea would be have a couple of talks and a written piece. And I think with the talks, you know, record videos, certain time limits, and then we'll just run them through uh, as a kind of a little, con so these are like little mini conference things. And we want talks depending on the number of people, which seems like a lot in this course, that will, you know, be maybe two or three minutes long that sort of thing, plus a written piece, which we'll be trying to get towards a, uh, a paper. So we're going to have the VAC. Uh, we're going to encourage the usage of the VAC. Um, uh, that's the Vermont Advanced Computing Center. We have um, some fun little logos that I'll share with you at some point. Uh, but the connection is VAC, right, is like vaccine. Vaccine comes from cow because it was the milkmaids that were not getting smallpox and it was figured out that oh it's because they had cowpox so vaccine gets connected to vash for money python fans fetch la vash um so that's going on so there is a completely reasonable explanation for why we would have a cow as a mascot for the vac in vermont also vacuum that's cool too so we have lots of data sets available um, and we're always interested in new ones, but we have 10% of all tweets, for example, going back to, to um, 2008. We have uh, you know, lots of different book data sets. Uh, we have Reddit as well. So this is sort of on the social media side, um, but you know, weather, climate, um, uh, data sets on, on transportation, uh, but we're always looking to add things. And some data sets on networks and so on. So. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can certainly work with uh, with this Twitter data, and we've really uh, finally got to a point where uh, I think well, there's a few more steps, but um, we have data online now through through a website called Story Wrangling, Story Wrangler. The the link is Story Wrangling. Let me find that for you. So you can visualize from, from Twitter. So these are four different n-grams, right? So this is a three-gram, three words. This is just the emoji for the virus, um, for virus. And um, hashtag me too and ha ha ha. This is in English, this, uh, in including retweets. And so this is a day scale. And you can look through this and sort of see how these things are behaving over time. If I can just look at maybe recent times. So this is... Um, Black Lives Matter, which peaks you know, here in, in, in June 2. So George Floyd was murdered um, a couple of days before this, actually, right? So this is, in fact, um, two days after he was murdered, which was Memorial Day. So you see that takeoff, and uh, 
on the other hand, we have uh, the emoji for this. If you look at coronavirus, you see that takes off massively in March. 12 is really the day that that spikes. Lots of things to look at here, over 100 languages. Um, and um, your TA, Michael Arnold, is the person who built the database that serves that particular piece. It's a Mongo database. The rest of the team um, did all sorts of things, right, including the very crucial part of processing the tweets in the first place, um, curating them, turning them into engrams. So it's very hard. The emoji part is actually horrific. Uh, and, and then, of course, making the, the website. So they're on all the papers. I won't say their names just here because it just feels like I'm revealing too much. But, I, I, but you can certainly find on the, on the website and on my site. Okay. Okay, so I've got to get a list of projects together, you know, re-sort of think how to do that here in this context. Um, but you can certainly pitch them as well. Something I just want to encourage thinking about, I have a little post, which hopefully this links to. Uh, when you write something, you should be able to go through all these, these, these levels. And so there's sort of the book, there's a whole, sec uh, maybe a sequence, you know, maybe a, a trilogy, maybe five, six, seven books. You know, that could be the sort of highest scale. It could be the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? That could be the, the big scale of everything. Um, but you need to be able to perhaps try to tell those stories going all the way down to just a few words. Um, so you can see some more in that piece I've written up there. But the idea here is, you know, if you're really in charge of a block of knowledge, and this is not a marketing thing, I mean, although it helps marketers, this is about knowledge, it's about thinking. And we can get stuck as scientists down here, right? And especially um, graduate students writing their thesis, they can be down here in the chapter and they, you know, they can't condense it. But you need to be able to adapt and understand and, and be in control of what this thing is boiled down to that you've discovered. Uh, there's this, you've got just a little bit of uh, flotsam up here, which it's not connected to anything. This is sort of like possibly a joke or a little bit of a, maybe a lie, right? It, it seems, it sounds okay, but it's, uh, if you look deeper into it, this is just sitting on some froth. This is the one where you've got all the sort of deep parts, but it's, it's a bit, bit of a puzzle. There's nothing laid on top. And then this last one is to indicate, here's a whole body of knowledge, and then there's sort of a lie on top of it, right? That's well-structured. It's well-structured. It's a misrepresentation. So, you know, some of this is sort of representing uh, propaganda. All right. Pox is awesome. All right. Okay, people. Overview. Overviewed.